and welcome to the end of season two of Super Pros Bros. I am player one, Ike, and with me, as always, is I'm player two, Eli. And Brasiden, you know, this podcast is available on YouTube, SoundCloud, and Spotify. I did not, Bro Jogan! <laughs> Fuck. Not again. <laughs> Not again. Are those the same places? <laughs> oh boy. It's on you. <laughs> Like, comment, share, and subscribe. It sure is. <laughs> oh. I want. I need to go back and listen to how I said that. It's going to be so different. I I spoonerize the absolute pants off that. Oh yeah, you did. Woo! Lord. So other than that magnificent mess up, uh, <laughs> when's the last time we recorded? It's It's been a couple weeks. So what happened? It's been all of October. I know we recorded on like the, probably like the 4th, I think. Something like that. Well, it's October 15th. Uh, now I'm curious. All right. Our last recording before this was on October 1st. Okay. Um, so I think, yeah, I just got back from winning the RCQ and Worlds since then. I don't know. I haven't done a whole hell of a lot. I guess played some more magic, went to work. We've got a family thingamajig coming up that we're going to Yarp. Or actually we'll have gone to like when you hear this because I think this is going to be coming out. Actually, this episode's going to be coming out on my birthday. So happy what? 36 years around the sun for this lucky Man, it's old as shit. Woo! Um, yeah, so going to see the I was talking to dad about this. We're going, so for those of you who aren't in the know, uh, we are going up to a family cabin that was bought by our great, great grandfather. It's like a summer home when they lived in Red Bluff and it got too hot. It's in mineral California. The basically smack dab center of uh Lassen national forest. I really, you really miss an opportunity to say in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of nowhere. In fact, I mean, we're staying at it. So uh, that's where this meetup is going to be. Lots of our family is going to be there. It's going to be really rad. But I'm realizing I don't think we've been there for like over a decade. Like, I don't remember the last time we've been there. I don't know that I've been there since I like graduated high school. Did we go after that? Do you remember? Um, I think I think I went a time or two while we were, I was still in high school. But I don't think I've gone since I left for college. So it's been, yeah, it's over, been a long fucking time. Yeah, well over a decade then. At least 12 years, if not more. Wow. It's gotten a makeover as the <laughs> the place was, the place that our great-grandfather bought was literally slapped together by a used car salesman. So, you know, it was trustworthy as all hell. All right, and then it had a fucking tree fall on it. Then it had a tree fall on it, which is when they uh, gave it a nice little makeover. So that'll yeah. be fascinating to see. Um, but going up there to put our grandmother, whose funeral we've already been to, but uh, it's going to be a family meetup and we're going to uh, spread her ashes. So, and we're going to stay in the in for those of you that have never been, which is all uh, almost certainly all of you in uh, Mineral, California, there is a ramshackle of a hotel that we've always seen next to the, like 
the town store because this really is just a yokel of a city there's a population of nine people i think yeah it's yeah it's town it's a town quote unquote yeah pit stop uh i think there's like a gas station uh like a gas station a post office a store that's kind of a store a a motel motel that has that in quotes has like a restaurant although i'm very curious to see that not that we're gonna like use it but i'm curious to see if they're like how much of a restaurant really is versus right, a see, guy well, we might have like breakfast saturday or something yeah just 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 to fucking try it and see if we can get food poisoning yeah but i think we are we're staying there which is gonna be fascinating uh see what the inside of that <laughs> that yeah. shed looks like <laughs> i should watch it somehow be really nice oh yeah it's gonna be immaculate it's gonna be great it'll be weird it'll be so wild but uh yeah, I think that's That's all I got going on in my neck of the woods. What about you? Um Yeah, my I've effectively put in what I'm going to leave my current position, um which is an interesting thing to say. Um It's weird cuz I don't have anything lined up, but Weird I, feeling to be sure. It's very strange. Um, I've done I've done it once before. It is very peculiar, yeah, given just, the way our family was about like jobs. Yeah, to like just quit a job. <laughs> yeah. So I basically said I told my boss I'm like by the end of November, if like I'm just out November thirtieth, like that's I'm done at that point. Whether or not I like if I find something else prior, I'll leave earlier and I'll let you know. Because like I was like, but. So that was an interesting conversation I had, um, but Ar- Artemis just fucking hates living here. And she came back from her travels and was immediately miserable. So it's just like, okay, we can't. Something's got to give. Yeah, it's like, and some of it is like, somebody talked about. And I'm like, <laughs> some of it's vacation versus. Ooh, so, some of home. it is. Some of it is like you know fucking whiplash from vacation. Some of it is shit she's got to fucking work out. And some of it is she just this, this place has burned her and she can't continue to stay. It's like okay. Which, yeah. So, fuck it. Job is job is not worth my marriage. So, yeah. oh, I date. also, I mean, the job isn't really worth your job. It's not like a job that you liked. No, but it paid well enough, and yeah. I I like insurance. Yeah. So, but I mean, you'll you'll be able to. You are a, you're leaving them in good standing. You've got yeah. good recommendations. You, you, yeah, look, yeah. you so, look great on paper. <laughs> yeah, I got that going for me. Um, where um, do you know where you guys are going to be headed to? Have you guys no uh, picked idea. a destination? That's the part that scares the shit out of me. I don't know where we're going yet. You got like a month and a half to figure that out. Pretty much. Actually, I've I have told this. I'm just yeah, it's a month and a half. Or no, like two months, like two and a half months. Yeah. Because I our lease is up like basically the end of November or okay. end of December. So, so I figured worst comes to worst, if I'm out the end of November. That gives me the month of December to, in earnest, find somewhere to relocate to. Yeah. So that's that was speed the other... run apartment. <laughs> exactly. Like I've done, I've done it once. Like yeah, I this can do gonna it be a again. A little bit different though, because you're going to be moving most likely states, right? You're looking at either going to like I I mean I speed ran found us an apartment to move to Washington. Fair. All right, touche. So I've again I've done it once. <laughs> <laughs> I can do it twice. Um. The the places on the moving block are, for those that aren't aware, are uh, Vancouver, assuming things go infinitely your way, Denver and Portland, right? Yeah, so I'm not I'm not back in the horse for Canada, but you know it's a fun pipe dream. Yeah, yeah. Um, more more realistically, probably Portland area or Denver area. Yeah, probably one of those two. Both great choices. Heard good things. So let's say. Speaking of, I actually just drove back up this morning from Portlandish area. I drank too much, ate too much, and played a game of Twilight Imperium and got fucking roasted. <laughs> I haven't played the game in like two and a half years, to be fair. I played with a group of people who play like fucking weekly. <laughs> they Do play this game a lot. Um, they, they, they like playing it. They've played it dozens of times, and I think I've played it a total of three. I, I I fuck if I'm annoyed because I was on my drive back. I was reevaluating some shit that I could have done better. Notably, like if I if I'd read a couple things and played something slower, 
I think I could have fucking roached everywhere. I basically <laughs> I played I played Sardak Door. Their whole gimmick is that they fucking ground invade like a motherfucker. And so like I wanted to take a take a place that it basically was this huge wormhole conduit. So mm-hmm. it would have given me access to most of the map. And I could have just proliferated ground forces everywhere out of that. Except I tried to fight Sean and his ships were way stronger than I thought they were, so I lost and it just fucking set me. Fucking Sean. Fucking Sean. And so I, I lost a lot of tempo on the map. It was no. Yeah, and I was just like, I misread a card and lost some economy, <laughs> and it's just like ah That's fuck. the worst playing play as someone who plays magic a lot, like <laughs> when you like play a card, you're like, I do this, and your opponent's like, that's not how the card works, and you just read it, you're like, Oh no. <laughs> yeah. The I because Sar- Sardak nor fight really well. You just so here the quick everything is based on a D10. All your ships have a like you hit a number to hit. Uh-huh. And then your opponent assigns damage. So Sardak Nord just have plus one to all of their da- all their dice. Uh-huh. So you your fighter you just fight better. So you are incentivized to go fucking pick a fight. Problem sure. is <laughs> so the ba- the base cru- like one of the ships is called a cruiser and by default it can take one hit. I didn't realize that Sean like the race that Sean had his cruisers start upgraded so they take two hits. That really fucking matters. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out yeah like if they only, a lot bigger than if one. they only take one hit I crush him. Yeah. The fact that they took two meant the combat went another round and I didn't have enough to kill him. And so I just lost a lot of shit. It's like, fuck. <laughs> shit. Yeah, fuck. yeah it's, it kind of fucks up my plans. <laughs> From monkey wrench in the works. We're I did gonna make add one a veranda. Guy, I, t- I did make one guy about shit himself, though. <laughs> Fighters normally hit on a nine, and they're like your fucking cannon fodder unit. So I upgraded mine, so they'd hit on an eight. Because of my race, they'd hit on a seven. I built my flagship. They hit on a six. <laughs> and I just fucking walked in with half a dozen. I was like, my fighters hit on a six. And the guy went, wait, what? <laughs> He's like, oh, fuck me. I'm retreating. Jesus. Yeah, I got hosed. It was terrible. Um, <laughs> But I didn't play with a guy who drives me up a wall. So I actually enjoyed playing. Yay! Yeah, I, I, there's, there's a friend of mine. I can't play the game with him. Like, he invites me every now and again. I'm like, I can't do it because I'll want to murder you. Because <laughs> afterwards we won't be friends no more. Yeah, it, he he does this shit and it drags the game out. It's a long game, like it it took us nine hours. When I played it with Mill, it takes closer to twelve. <laughs> like he just he just fucking needles and wheels and deals on shit that he doesn't need to, so it takes so much extra time. Oh, it's maddening. <laughs> Anyways. What? Speaking of things that aren't maddening. <laughs> today, as we are ending season two, don't worry, season three will be out next week, or the week after, rather, as it is bi weekly. Uh, this week, we are just, as my co host was written in our notes, having a question wild card bonanza <laughs> <laughs> where we just ask questions that we as brothers don't necessarily know the answer to, or, you know, kind of find it fun to, you know, figure out what we think and. Hope you guys enjoy what figure us figuring out more about each other, you know, and the answers they're for. They're up. Blah blah blah. Shall I start oh. or shall you? Uh, you you kick us off. Well, as your uh, occupation with your current job is coming to an end, uh, what the fuck do you do? <laughs> I've realized I have no fucking. I was trying to explain what you do, and the closest I got was guessing. You've seen Office Space, right? Yeah. The guy who ends up getting in a wheelchair, he has that scene with the bobs where he's explaining what he does. He goes, I'm a people person! Like, explaining that he, like, helps one department talk to the other because the engineers can't talk and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I think that's what he does, but I don't fucking know. Kind of. Okay, Expound. so... Expound. The, qu- the quick TLDR, because it's, it's dumb. Um... So I do. I I have two main responsibilities. One is I help update. Like we have this massive fucking Boolean logic table that's database that drives the actual the part numbers that go for every Kenworth truck that is produced. 
they, they basically engineer says uh, if you hit conditions X, Y, Z, I need these parts to go on the order. Mm-hmm. So we set up this big fucking table that says, okay, if you have these sales codes, this part number gets called out. I help update it when there's changes because there's new parts come out, because new options come out, because whatever the fuck. That is one thing I do. The other big thing I do, or I have two other things I do because I have a special thing. I check a lot of part numbers for materials. Um, and I basically confirm confirm shit because there are certain components of a truck that are really fucking expensive, it turns out. Uh, notably axles, <laughs> which you wouldn't think it, but engines are expensive. They're like 20K a pop for a big truck, like a semi-truck. Mm-hmm. Um, you, get, you get some big fucking off-highway trucks. You want to you wanna guess what those axles are going to run you? 5K. Oh, my brother in Christ. <laughs> Um, a hundred dollars. Nice, hundred grand <laughs> for an axle. For the axles, yes. <laughs> the axles are fucking ridiculous. <laughs> like I, I assumed that the engines would always be more expensive. They're like no, <laughs> no. Engines are pretty standard. They're like twenty to thirty k. Axles. Like I remember when I started this specific thing, I suggested a part change, and someone talked to me like what you're suggesting would change the price by $12,000. I'm like, <laughs> what? <laughs> so, yeah, axles are fucking crazy expensive. So can tra- transmissions can also be pretty crazy. Um, yeah, and then the thing I do that makes me a people person <laughs> is engineers are notoriously terrible communicators. <laughs> um, yeah. And so I will off half of the shit I do is checking their work and seeing if it makes sense. And like the request, if, if what they printed, I'm like, is this actually what you want? Mm-hmm. So there is like back and forth and then like rectifying miscommunications between production plants and engineering. I'm, I'm a lot of the middleman there. That's what I actually do. So other than facilitating communication between two departments, and kind of making it sure that they understand each other. Could your job be relatively replaced by like AI in the not so distant future or not really? Um, probably like there, there's probably a fair amount of shit that you could automate with it. I think one of the big problems with automating it is that the system that we update, like the actual Boolean logic data table is fucking ancient. So I think, (laughs) I think, Bruh, it's older than you. <laughs> Thanks. It's it's old as shit. Like, I'm okay, not that much older than you. That's not. But my like my, my point my point is my point is it's a fucking forty year old database. I know, I know. Yeah, like it's just <laughs> it's older than you. It's older than you. That's it, it is. I know. It's just, I don't know. Like it's it's weird that occasionally I'll pull up like a message. Like mm. in the in the system, like one of the things that prints out are messages, like error messages, and like there's there's some I'll find from like fucking 1988. Like, Jesus Christ! Like yeah, like they're fucking old, written in hieroglyphics. Yeah, like is that fucking papyrus. Um, um. So yeah, so I think that's probably the biggest goddamn hurdle is that. Damn chinchillas. Um, is that it's it's just archaic. Yeah. So that's probably the biggest hurdle to implementing AI and that fucking Kenworth is just notoriously bad and unwilling to use tools that are modern. Delightful. I wonder why you're quitting. Yeah, they are I like listen, I <laughs> I have I have opinions about fucking AI and a lot of its integration. It fucking scares the piss out of me. However, like I don't think it'd be not this to, one, not for a while. I, I say this one, pretty. It's pretty AI proof, but kind of for the wrong, stronger, <laughs> dumber reasons. reasons. Like it's not like a conscious choice. It's that they're just. It's the principle of the thing. <laughs> yeah, it's it's that fucking. Mentality. I didn't get a harumph from that man. Yeah, exactly. Like, so, yeah. All right, I passed the ball, sir. All right, so I know you you've expressed an interest in wanting to 
wanting to direct, you expressed interest in wanting to write, would you ever want to be an actor? Uh, yeah, I think that would be fun. I, I think it depends. I don't think I would ever really be interested in going full Daniel Day-Lewis or Christian, uh, Christian, Bale. Christian Bale on the thing. But I can see, sure. like, Taika Waititi, when he acts, seems like he has a fucking blast. Uh, <laughs> there, there's people that, like, they, you know, they act when it kind of suits them or when it's sure. something they enjoy. I can see myself fucking around and doing something when I enjoy it. I don't think I'd want to ever be, like, serious. And, you like, you want to go, like, you wouldn't want to be full career actor necessarily. Uh, I mean, like, th again, there are actors that I think they enjoy. I don't think I'd be willing to put in the time to be like a great actor. I think I could be like a good, like Patton Oswalt has an acting career. The guy looks like he's having a blast most of the time in most of those characters. Sure. I can see myself doing an acting career like that, where it's just like, it's like, I wouldn't approach it acting first. It would have to be act, acting supplementary. So like either, you know, randomly got into stand-up comedy or was producing or writing for a show. Like the, the guy that plays, um, uh, Brett Goldstein, the guy that played uh, shit in um, Ted Lasso, he played the grunty guy. Wow, my brain is a cat. Oh, I I can see him. I can hear him. I don't remember his name. In season two, he becomes like a, a writer. A uh, coach. Push, push. He's on, uh, b -b 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 Roy Kent. Yeah, yeah, the captain. The yeah, the captain. captain. Um, so that actual person is named Brett Goldstein. He's a comedian from Britain and a writer. He was he's done some. He hasn't done any like major shows, uh, like uh, comedy stand shows, but you know has done smaller ones. Uh, got an opportunity, wrote for this show, and kind of they were creating all the characters, and he auditioned for uh, Roy Kent, hmm. and got the part. It's like. I can see in that circumstance where it's like, yeah, I, would, I think I'd do that well. I would enjoy that character, stuff like that. But I don't think I would want to like go in and do like oodles of auditions. Sure. I think I would want to kind of back in my way into it if I was ever going to do it. I think that's the most like reasonable outcome. I, there's aspects of acting that I enjoy. I think I'd really enjoy voice acting. Sure. Uh, but again, that's that one's even more impossible to get into. I that's think it'd be very cool. niche. It's Super. It, the people never leave. You don't get too old for a role if you take good care of your voice and you don't get sick. So, like, lots of people are voice actors and they just don't need to get replaced. And since they're looking at you, Nolan North. Yeah. I mean, like, since they've been doing it a long time, they have name recognition within the industry. And so they just get picked up again. Yeah. So, like, again, if I had the opportunity, I think I'd fuck with it, but I'm not going to, it's not something I'm going to like chase after. I don't have that kind of energy or time. For sure. What's the best hack to improve your writing in your experience? Uh, stop thinking about it. Is this like a Nike moment or what do you mean? <laughs> um, especially, especially first draft. Don't think about it. Don't dwell on it. Don't, don't analyze. Don't critique for first draft. Just fucking put words page. Go. Don't think about it. Don't, don't, don't. Just don't. Just put words on, put, put words on page. <laughs> what's this? That fucking, what's that? Did you ever watch uh, the Grindhouse movie? No. They had like the fake. Um... <laughs> they had these fake commercials. Uh, and there's one for Grindhouse that it was just called Don't. And, and it was just like every five seconds, it was just like. Blah, 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 blah. Don't. If it's blah, 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 blah. Don't. <laughs> it's like, uh, <laughs> I'll, Excellent. I'll include it in the show notes for those of you that didn't ever get the opportunity. It's fucking hilarious. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but it's just like the way you're just like, uh, don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, especially for first draft, just so many people, you get stuck at this fucking contemplative stage. Yeah, where where everything is overanalyzed and you are 
you are working on embellishing details that aren't there yet. Yeah. Like, listen, you you can't shape clay that doesn't exist. You Ooh. gotta start with something, and the less the less roadblock you put between you and getting something, uh-huh. the better. Like first draft, do not think, do not be critical, do not analyze, do like you can fix that shit. That's what rewrites are for. That's what edits are for. That's what beta reading is for. There, there is so many steps to process to re- to refine and add add the details, add the nuance, add the extra extra or cut away the chaff. You yeah. know, but but you got to have something to do all that shit with. Like yeah. you got to start somewhere and don't overthink it. And that's the, how you stop yourself. That's how you just end up in analysis paralysis land. Ooh, and you start second guess. Paralysis. That's awesome. Yeah, it. I mean, yeah. It's like that. You just you just stall yourself. Yeah. And there then, was... and then you you open the door to the brain demons and the imposter syndrome and fuck that shit. Just yeah. right. Like just especially a yeah. first draft. Don't think about it. There was a uh, some interview I saw with uh, Seth Rogen where he's talking about writers. <laughs> it's just the amount of writers he he will talk by you know when he's like producing a movie or whatever like that. One of the writers comes up and just like in idle conversation brings up this like cool idea for a, like, a how script. much of you how much of it is like oh you, like can i oh i'd love to read that They're like oh i haven't written it yet it's like <laughs> it's like it's like so many writers he's just like yep. just fucking write he's like if you just write things you're gonna fucking crush he's like just like sit down and just like write shit that's like that's yeah, how you get I, ahead that's how you can get in it's just like neil, so many people like, don't neil neil gaiman has a very a very poignant quote um that it's like if you force yourself to write and don't just write when you if if you write when you have inspiration and write even when you don't when you look back you will fail to see which days you had it and which days you didn't mm. like there is and there's a lot of people like any any successful author who like who would be doing it professionally makes a living at it has any kind of name recognition like the biggest thing they'll just tell you is consistency like and i i think uh sanderson has a, a good note about it and he's like you know you the thing the thing is like writing is attainable but you have to have the discipline to do a standard nine to five kind of shift yeah but you don't have anyone to tell you to do it you just have to make yourself no that's That's such a bitch yeah it's uh, there's a quote that i remember uh, pete holmes i think was talking about on some podcast where it's like treat like very much like a job you treat writing like opening up a shop and customers as ideas you just sit down and you open up shop and if the ideas come awesome if they don't they don't but you open up shop every day not meaning that you sit there and just wait for ideas to come but like you know you sit down and start writing and then you hope that you know the muses visit your mind but if you don't open up shop and sit down and start writing the muses can't come like you're at that point if you don't open up shop to let them come in you're hoping to bump into them on the street while you're both are going in different directions it's like that's such an ask where the other one is like by putting yourself in a stable place for them to run into you it becomes more likely yeah all right so there's an interesting thing i remember that um uh, clint eastwood when he was directing he doesn't like using the word action yeah he likes to say go he, um, I, I've heard an even better one, which is he doesn't even say go. He just like moves his fingers in this like circular. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. It's super so low key. If if you were ever directing, or if you heard of other kind of really weird directorial tips or tricks or or things that you think people should utilize more often, there's a really cool one that uh, Quentin does. Quentin Tarantino has no cell phones on set. Full stop. There is. Okay. A like they you have like there's somebody in charge of it, but there there's this area where you just leave your phones before you come onto the set, before you're even like video village anywhere on set. There is this like stop and drop your phones off, and uh, it's to keep people in the moment, keep people you know don't have distractions for yourself and for others, and keep everybody kind of like locked in. And like it's somewhere between you get fined and you get fired if you're on set with a cell phone. I don't remember which it is. I know that it's like a huge taboo for him. I think mm-hmm. that one's as hard as it is to pull off. I think that one is good because uh, sure. it, it is like just being 
just being a, as a as a tutor at a charter school working with kids and i'm like here to just give the answers there was a guy there was a kid sits down the other day and i understand that these are children but the kid sits down and goes hey you want to help me with this i go sure i'm here for it he goes all right help me find this one he's basically asking for me to give him the answer which i'm not going to yeah. fucking do but i yeah. find it where it is in the book and i point and i go you're going to want to read this this sentence that's all he has to do it doesn't have to read a paragraph doesn't have to repeat this sentence will tell you the answer and then he's just he's on his phone he goes uh-huh i go and then i put i literally drew a arrow on his book and he's just like on his phone talking to his friends on his phone talking to his friends i wrote the answer in huge print on the whiteboard nothing circled it literally six times nothing and then i just fucking left and i was like as the, the day ended he sat there for so long like he started asking me this question with 45 minutes till the end of the day and l- it did all this and i was just like i'm fucking off it i was like oh it's 4 30 i'm going home now bye <laughs> and then i just left and the next day he comes back and goes so can you help me with this and it was just like the answer still behind me if there's literally an arrow in his book i was like yeah just pop it open this page he's okay i'm like all right Good luck. <laughs> like, I don't want to tell you, dude. But it's like the amount of distractions we have. Like that yeah. one's a big killer. Um, uh, I think having fun with it is really important. I saw this dumbass fucking tweet a while back about somebody kvetching about that. There was uh, still. So for those of you that don't know, on most, especially big screen film sets there are they have literally this is hilarious and awesome and beautiful they have a photographer who just wanders around the set taking pictures of stuff for like behind the scenes like photography it's adorable it also helps like keep people keep up to date if something happens on set you know they can i'm assuming they can be asked to take a picture of something and then if there's like an issue with a part they can use that picture to like send it to producers or some shit but on like for instance because of this because of this occupation on uh the dark knight or no yeah it's the dark knight the second one right yeah, yeah on the dark knight there is a picture of heath ledger doing an ollie over christian bale while they're both in full makeup just the joker doing a fucking ollie over batman lying on the ground it's like <laughs> fucking awesome it's because of this you have uh I, I mean sometimes it's recorded too because of this you have like uh what's his face uh pascal wandering around game of thrones with a uh, strawberry jelly in his eyes doing funny things oh uh, i'm sorry i have to make a note about that that scene f- fucked me over oh no it I'm... haunted me i oh, had yeah. nightmares for a week i i i didn't the, the day i saw that i literally didn't i couldn't sleep well yeah like i slept it, like three it hours fucked it just, me up yeah See, seeing like a back like you know behind the scenes and him just like giggling i'm like oh thank christ <laughs> Right. Like I could let it go. Apparently, apparently in that scene, uh, like Alfred Bjornsson was the most gentle person ever. Yeah, to be like, That's awesome. Really? How's that possible? <laughs> just, just the size of him. Apparently, he's a very sweet guy. For what I've heard, he's very. I mean, sure. Trivial. Why would it, Why wouldn't yeah. you be at that point? The world can't hurt you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> pretty easy to be lax when everybody's your bitch yeah when you when you walk it like traffic and it moves for you yeah. <laughs> but so on the behind the scenes of the last of us there was some shots that uh the onset photographer took of uh pascal and i can't remember the little girl just messing around just having fun yeah, yeah. And it was adorable and some douche rocket was like you're costing the company money and blah, 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 blah. You shouldn't be doing this. You know, we, we need to get these takes done. It's like, all right, I'm sure that's good from an economical standpoint, but we're making art. Like so much of art comes from whimsy. So I like the reason Quentin Tarantino doesn't have cell phones is so that people focus on the art. The reason I think it's fun, it's important to have fun and be chill on set is because it's about the art. The other stuff does matter, but it has to come kind of second while being of import. And so I think that's like one of the major things that people lose out on this sure. idea of being like serious. It's, it's a hard line. It's, to a, hard, tread. it's a hard line. There is, yeah. there is, there has to be some give and take. Yeah. Like I've produced a couple of like student films and to get shit done, to get shit moving, you do have to make like, not, nobody has infinite time, especially then and you don't have infinite money. So like you do have to get shit done, but at the same time, it's kids making a movie. You do have to be like pretty chill about it. So yeah. it it is running that line. I'm trying to think of some of the other ones that I know of. 
uh some people are really big about especially when you're recording on like film instead of digital because film is you know you you don't re-record over film uh you want to like do a lot of practice which makes sense um yeah i'd say like you know practice cell phones offset be open to oh the other one is uh somebody was when working with rob williams they would especially with somebody who's kind of eccentric or you know uh very fun it is mm -hmm. uh don't don't be a stick in the mud do it their way at least once just to see if they were right you know be yeah. willing to kind of try shit out as somebody who's written stuff before and like had people act it out it's really annoying when somebody like doesn't follow a script but the mm -hmm. kind of balance on that one that i generally would do when somebody who's like oh i've got this really good idea like let's do it my way once and then we'll do it your way once or like you know like let's do yeah, it your yeah. way and then my way whichever way they work with it so that you get you are night like you're kind to them open to their ideas but at the same time you get what you want and find that kind of balance of like give and take i yeah, think is like also really effective important. compromise yeah but to not be so wrapped up in your idea like some of the best ideas come from spontaneity i mean you see that in like most of ron williams movies there's just like so much shit that's just made up on the spot like he just saw a thing and they went for it little things like that they do matter and so i think like yeah. well you don't want to just throw out the baby with the bathwater and just like let's do it all like you know uh improv i think it is important to like you know kind of allow for that what's the longest you've ever spent reading Hmm. Uh, like, like no, no breaks, no, no stoppage, or like uh, most, most I've read in like a twenty-four hour period. Uh, let's go both. Okay. So probably most that I've read just, just in one, one giant ass sitting. Probably about six hours that's pretty good um like what did i i i think i basically just kind of annihilated like the third aragon book or fourth aragon book i just basically <laughs> sat there and just read the whole thing yeah. um the however the most i've read in like a 24-hour period was about 13 hours shush um well was, was this on was, your flight to germany <laughs> this was this is on a flight back from germany because <laughs> it was like um and i was i i had a lot of fucking i i just i was like okay so we go to the airport we have some time to go and then i'm like okay i can read you know, i read some in the airport for uh it, it was one of the twilight archive books i think it was the third one I think it was Words of Radiance, or not Words of Radiance. Um, fuck, what's the third one called? Anyways, so I was like, okay, that I read one. some, read some waiting, and a lot, and then like, you know, it was like a, a, an eleven-hour plane ride. It's just like I read, you know, I read seven hours in the plane or something. Like, I think I watched Damn. a movie and I didn't sleep, so I was just like, oh, I'll just keep fucking reading. <laughs> I'm just like passed out. <laughs> so, okay. Like, hey. And then got home and I read a little more at home. Like I just read, <laughs> I just read a lot it that just, day. It was just hitting. Yeah, I just, I mean, I, I think I made it through. The book was like fifteen hundred pages or something, like fourteen hundred pages. I think I made it through like nine, like a thousand of them, or something, basically mm -hmm. in a day. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I fucking just like all right, and just kept going. <laughs> Give me more. <laughs> yeah, all, all of those books, I've done it, so like, when I've finished the books, I'm like, I'm gonna go read, and normally I'll read for, like, half an hour to an hour, and I've finished a couple of those, it's like four. At one point, Artemis came in to check on me, she's like, yeah, I'm like, I'm still reading. Fuck off. Like, <laughs> she did it again later, like, hour three, and I'm like, I'm not done yet, I'll be out when I'm done. She's like, okay, sorry. <laughs> I said, I'm not finished! I just like I don't want you to like fall asleep. It'd be weird. I'm like I know. Go away. <laughs> All right. Um, who is an actor 
like a like a, a, big, a bigger name actor, not like some random stooge like Joe from accounting. Um, who is <laughs> who is a bigger name actor that you don't think should 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 get work? And try to find somebody that isn't Mark Wahlberg, because I know we've had a, your your fucking treatise on why he needs to die. Um, like Jared Leto. You had an answer way faster than I was prepared for. Yeah, I didn't think about that. That was not prehanded, just like when you said it. I was like, Jared Leto gets a lot of work, and he's not like a bad guy. I mean, he does have some tendencies that are like sketch. But it's like, it's kind of shocking that he gets as much work as he does, because I think he's predominantly panned. And I don't think a lot of other actors like working with him because he's like really awkward and it goes like he try. He's not like I don't want to say Jared Leto. Know your rain, like know your lane as a famous actor was a lead singer of a very big band. Oh, I think it was like 30 seconds to Mars or whatever. Um, but like. Like everything he's in, it's like she's like he thinks I think somewhere in his brain, he thinks he's in the same echelon as like Adam Driver, uh, Daniel Day Lewis, Christian Bale kind, hmm. and he's just not. <laughs> I as far as I'm concerned is probably a better way to put it. Uh, sure. I'm sure there's other actors. He's just the one that like popped into my head. Just like I don't know something about him, like the work he does. He tries really hard, but I think it shows that he's trying. It's not it. Yeah, it, 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 he's like he's attempting to do what somebody else does yeah. as himself. And like, I think that shows, sure. I don't think he's a bad guy. It's just like, I don't know. Just do your own thing. Don't try to do somebody else's thing. Yeah. He's the guy at the party. He's like a sycophant of like, he's, Daniel he's, he's trying too hard and you know it. And it's awkward. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I see like, cause mo most things, if I default, like if you just mentioned Jared Leto, the first thing I think about is, him being the Joker, and I'm like, ah, it's just a worse, it's the worst version of Heath Ledger's Joker. I mean, even like, I don't know, even that, it's just like, I don't know. It, it's not only that, like, even excluding Jer or like, even excluding Heath Ledger's Joker, it still was just like fucking weird, and just like drew a an inordinate amount of attention to itself and not in like a captivating sort of way but in like a holy fuck sort of way uh another one maybe would be like will smith because will smith just will smith's in all of his movies except when he decides he wants to to get a you know a statue i don't know then he has to slap a man then he has to slap a man does will smith have to slap a bitch um the ones that come to mind off the top of my head okay like you can hate tom cruise as much as you want you can definitely judge him as a human being but as a fucking actor like that I... that's a, that's a difference i think like sure like you see tom cruise and he's like i'm gonna do this insane stunt you're like the fuck is, is wrong it? with you and I then you look say, at the I, end I have... product and you're like okay <laughs> like, yeah, i I, I, get it. I don't like tom cruise as a person but i God, i will no. respect him as an actor because he commits to doing his own stunts and that's you know what i think it's a tip of the cap for me like yeah. that anyone who's willing to do their own stunts i'm like you know what well played good, and apparently good. he is a joy to be on set with i i think like for other actors i don't know about like he had that thing where he was yelling at screaming at people oh, but that to was... be fair they were breaking the rules and he takes it very seriously i, I was gonna say that's very seriously, that's that's so. a very gray area yeah like of all people like that's one of those ones that also for the record i think the the other one of like christian bale yelling at a guy for a million years ago in like the terminator thing that one kind of got like everybody made fun of him but it was like the guy wasn't doing his job and he was operating machinery like that's somebody you should yell at. You don't want somebody operating machinery and like not paying attention. That that is dangerous. Yeah. So, you know, uh, yeah, I think that right. doing your own stunts is over the top. I just respect how far he, I, something about the energy of it is different, I guess, sure. than like uh, Jared. But yeah, sure. Yeah. I get it. If you could erase from your mind one anime and watch it all over again, which Ooh. would you? And which would you erase from your mind and never watch again? <laughs> oh, that's interesting. Okay, okay. 
Um, hmm. Hmm. I. What would what would I love to reappreciate and rewatch? I'm I'm gonna give kind of two answers for different reasons. Here for it. Um. I I would love to rewatch and like reappreciate, uh, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Um. If with the caveat of I just removed the American version from my brain as well. Okay. Um, <laughs> remove all Full Metal Alchemist. Yeah, so you remove can all Full Metal Alchemist because I would just want to appreciate Brotherhood. Um, the other all option, right. and and my my gut just throws it, is I would love to reappreciate and rewatch Assassination Classroom. That show low key fucking bangs, and it has it just has some fucking great emotional writing mm -hmm. that I just I it's it's really good um all right what is what is something else I can just fucking straight trash can yeah I was like what, what do you want to never have <laughs> never have oh, your eyes <sighs> um uh, And Ajin was pretty stupid. Um, Hajin? Aj Ajin. It's a it's a show on Netflix. It's kind of it's animation is. Oh really? really? I I remember talking to you this one a while back, and I thought you fucked with it pretty hard. I, I, it it is it is good because of one character, the old guy. Yes, yes. <laughs> I, I never see that you fuck with it super hard. That fucker is amazing. Every yeah. time that dude's on camera, he fucking steals the spotlight instantly. That yeah. dude bangs. He's just <laughs> fucking. He's the right kind of psychotic. I love it. Yeah. Um. Everyone else in that cast sucks ass. <laughs> Every other character in that show is just fuck. It, they're stupid. They're they're weirdly conceited and annoying. Like everyone else sucks except that guy who knows what he's about and he fucking delivers. He's probably the only reason I don't eradicate that show. Um. Like, there, there's there's a bunch of shows I have, like, some frustrations with. And, like, some dumb misgivings. I kind of want to forget that I ever saw the first season of Promise Neverland so that I could never think about watching the second season. Because that is the <laughs> biggest dumpster fire in history. I've never watched the second season, but I just, like, kind of don't want to have that, like, dangling thread. Um, I could do without ever having watched any of Happy Sugar Life. Yeah, I could I could purge that out of my brain pretty quick. That's that's a show where just like, how about we make a horrible situation for for a million reasons, where everyone's terrible. <laughs> it's like, but why though? Reasons, okay. Like, it's not great. It's I'm not... scrolling through the immature to Happy Sugar Life, and it's nice, nice, and then a girl stabbing another girl. On the floor. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> a lot of that. It's a lot of it's a lot of mind fuckery. It, it's got some interesting ideas to it. The problem is, it doesn't have the fucking it. It doesn't have like the animation to pull it off. It it it's not a well produced show. It feels like mm. it feels like it skips steps and it's bare bones. So I I'd, it. <laughs> troubling it's deeply disturbing which is what they want it to be it's like ah i can do without it if i want something fucking disturbing and troubling and that makes me uneasy i can i can go watch made in abyss that show actually is great and unsettling as fuck all right so there, there's kind of there's something i've heard where it's like it's the it's the golden age of content creation Okay, and there is there you know the, there's a billion Netflix produces a billion shows. And there's so many fucking independent like there's a lot more independent studios, et cetera, et cetera. Is that a good thing? Because most people and like there's this kind of this race and acceleration of stuff, right? And it feels like so much shit made is just that it's shit. It's soulless. It's a cash grab. So do you think that 
So say platforms like Netflix, you know, your Hulu, any place that's producing original content, should they be so willy nilly greenlighting stuff or should they be more scrupulous and I'd be willing to fucking put the kibosh on some people? Yes. So it, it, this is just kind of like, is the Internet good or bad? Yes. <laughs> it, by producing and making as much shit, they are likely to get better things. If they spent the time, it, it's kind of like, I mean, should you, it, it's kind of up there in a way with the the earlier, the way we talked about the writing philosophy of just get it on the page. This is mm -hmm. just kind of like, get it done. By making so many things, I think we do get better content. The only really big L is there is a lot of bad content that's created or con or better said, I think there's a lot of content that you and I and plenty of others don't enjoy. I think there are generally speaking for every artistic endeavor, there is an audience of some variety. Sometimes sadly it, or, you know, depending upon who, who and how's watching it, you know, the room, does it have an audience? Yeah, but I don't think it's the audience Tommy Wiseau intended or the way he intended it's not, it to be it's received. Not for the reason. But like, there is an audience for it. So if you're willing, you know, if you're somebody that is okay with having your stuff laughed at, I think there's an audience. There is truly an audience for everything to a degree. Um, but I think it's better. The only problem is it comes with this L of having to sift through stuff, which is why I think review channels are actually beneficial in this time frame. There's a lot of like, when it comes to react channels, I'm not generally a big fan, although I do get sucked into that just because it's your because Some, sometimes it's funny. Sometimes it's funny, but I think by and large it is. I don't want to say it's a net negative, but I do think people can feast their eyes on better things that have the same amount of like mental bandwidth. If you you enjoy what you enjoy, so I'm not looking sure. to you know yuck anybody's yum. Enjoy what you want, but I do think there is by and large better content of the same you know i used to knock uh reality tv but it is something that you can kind of project onto people watch them be idiots feel good about yourself and it takes no mental bandwidth i think that is a relatively unique viewing experience by and large like i used to think like why would you watch this when you could watch a movie it's like watching a movie takes mental energy like a good movie takes mental energy Watching somebody be a moron and then just laughing at how much of a moron they are doesn't take much. After you've come home from a it's long true. day at the factory, doesn't take much. That's what you needed. That Daddy's got you. So, like, I think in the same way, I think putting out all this stuff, you have to sift through it. But I think by and large, I think the percentage is relatively the same across the board. And so now there's more of it. And since there's more people, I think it's beneficial, right? So, like, if a company produces 10 things a year, and they try to winnow it down, you're probably going to still get, you know, however much percentage of bangers, as opposed to if you say yes to everything. But there's money going into more spaces. People are getting to try stuff out, which is very important in an artistic space. You sure. get people to put credits to their name. Everybody's got a shot. You know, all the audiences get what they want. And I still think the same percentage of good things is probably getting made thereabouts. Maybe it's less, maybe it's more. It's really hard to say, but I sure. think kind of people getting to make their stuff. If it sucks, they don't get a second shot at it. You get fucked, but you got your shot. And I think that last part is very important because back in the day, I would imagine it was a lot harder to get your shot. And maybe now, I don't know if it is, but maybe now it's easier. And I think for the people that they take their shot and they miss the fact that they got to take their shot, I it's think important. it's a net benefit, although sometimes sure. a hard pill to swallow for those who do take their shot in this. Sure. All right. What are three books that you would recommend people read if they're like, you know, like three of your favorite books or three books that you think are just bangers? And what are three books that if people are on the fence or they just shouldn't read full stop that you've read? No throwing fucking... Fifty Shades of Shit under the bus anymore. <laughs> you have to have read it. Okay. Um, I I I will I will hard pitch, um, Stormlight Archive. Till the day I die. 
There's um, one. So there's one. Um, I'll, prob- I'll probably do this by series as much as by book. Um, I figure they do seem to go to together. Um, I yeah, I'll, st- I'll still preach the gospel of Worm. I, I think Worm <laughs> is still great. I think it's the best <laughs> thing he's written. Um, I will not preach its fucking sequel, though. It's hard to work. God, 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 I'm so disappointed. I put, I'll put that as one thing I won't recommend to people. I won't fucking recommend Ward. Ugh. It just, it didn't, it didn't have the same fucking stakes as Worm. It didn't have the same dope fucking character irregularity as Worm. It didn't have the same fucking crisis of conscience that Worm did so perfectly. Ah, it sucked. God, like, what? Worm had this great paradigm where the person starts and wants to be a hero and gets fucking slotted into being a villain, but she kind of likes it because she's been a social outcast and suddenly she has fucking friends. Hmm. Like, and it puts it in this very, very interesting and understandable conflict where it's like, I like this, yeah, but I don't necessarily think I should be here. And so she, it was in this weird spot for a long time of trying to be this kind of moralistic villain because there are people worse than them. Yeah. But at the same time, you know, they fucking robbed a bank at one point. So, <laughs> you know, and she had fucking spiders bite dudes until his junk fell off. Um, as you do. As one does. Best part is that guy shows back up later and he's fucking pissed about it. Um, for I, reasons. I wonder why. Why? Yeah. Um, oh, Lung. A big fucking metal dragon. Um, but yeah, the sequel just didn't didn't hit. Um, all right. What's what's the third thing I would? No, no, you're too deep. You're only you're one across on both. No, I'm 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 two on two on yes, one on what's no. It? Oh, Stormlight and Worm. My apologies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What's a what's a third? Yes. Like un- unequivocally, yes. Oh, duh. Berserk. Can't confirm. Busted. Yeah, like hard, hard yes on Berserk. Um. What else am I fucking put putting the kibosh on? Um, I mean, alternatively to Berserk, I think it's actually a book, and not a comic. I, I love um, the Expanse. I think the Expanse is great. Um, I this is gonna sound weird coming from me, <laughs> but I I. I have trouble recommending some fucking young adult stuff. Oof. Um, because I reread some Aragon. Oof. I I thought you that's where you're gonna end up. Yeah, it's yeah, ooh, it's rough. It's uh, man, when I take off the fucking rose tinted glasses and I actually look back at that, ugh, <laughs> it's uh oof. Oof. It's not good. It's 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 really not. It's just got some fucking cringy writing. It's just yeah. Uh, that's that's one thing I really can't recommend in good conscience anymore. Just sad that I actually say that. Uh, I would probably just. This is kind of funny because because I recommended it recently, but like I would probably disabuse people of like Bungo Stray Dogs. Like, don't read that. Don't watch that. Interesting. What changed? Um, I'm getting more and more frustrated because one of the main characters just refuses to. There's so many prop. It's it's running into the stupid problem of of idiot writing, <laughs> where it's like there there's so many things where I'm like, you have a power that makes you bulletproof, turn it on. He just like he just gets injured for no reason, and I'm like, like he just <laughs> he fucking fist like he, his whole gift is to turn into like this basically this celestial tiger, and so, at the start of the show he can't control it. But there's one character whose whole gimmick is to help people mod- like moderate their powers and control mm-hmm. their powers. So he just has super strength, super senses, and basically bulletproof at his fingertips when he wants it. 
and he just doesn't use it like ever. <laughs> why would you? It's not yeah, very good power. Well, like, why would you ever engage in a standard fist fight? Why, like, when there's when there's stakes and you're fighting against other people with fucking superpowers? I'm like, yeah. a dude pulls a gun on you. Why are you not making yourself bulletproof immediately? Why are you ever fucking? And it's not like it's a matter of endurance. Like the main character has just he's fucking thrown down, and like in the early seasons, he gets into ridiculous fucking Dragon Ball Z esque fights with people, like, and he can take punishment. And then later seasons, he just gets hit like four times, and he's fucking down. I'm like, you got hit through a building, like you got punched and went straight through like a marble fucking wall, and got up. And you mean to tell me that some jackass with a fucking Walter PPK can shoot you and you go down like a fucking bag of rocks? What is happening here? <laughs> so I'm just I'm so I'm so angry what what this series has done. I'm like fuck! How are we fucking fumbling at the finish line because we forgot he can do this? <laughs> so disappointed I'm, I'm i'm literally watching the last season out of fucking anger <laughs> i'm like i'm fucking committed so i'm gonna watch you and i don't like it uh, I don't like it <laughs> shit <sighs> <sighs> all right what genre do you think would be the hardest to write for a movie obviously it's person to person one of the biggest ones because it it straddles the line of being shown and not shown is like uh not mystery but like kind of mm. like espionage sure like being like okay yeah like the one anything with like one to two like big reveals that need sure. to make sense and also at the same time have like eluded your readers or your viewers is like a tough line because you if you make it sure. too much uh too subversive or too like hidden then they're like what the it, fuck it, it's just the day of sex yeah. you're, you're just doing a fucking oceans 12 yeah you're just doing that or <sighs> if that, you're way. there was a movie that um like for instance one of the ones that was uh now you see me Okay. The ending is like, ah, oh, yes, this guy was in on it too. It's like, why the fuck would he have done all these things if he was in on it? It doesn't mm. make any sense. Yeah. It's like so bad. I'm trying to do my best not spoil it. There's a reveal at the end where you're like, but why? <laughs> like this character has no reason for the to be doing this thing. Yeah. And it's like, oh, but this. It's like, well, that person wasn't privy to this circumstance, so they wouldn't have known if they did or didn't do this thing. It's like it, that doesn't track. Yeah. Also, bi- biggest punt in that one is the fact that the follow-up, I-, I think Dan Harmon pointed this out, or maybe it was just my roommate. So the first one is called Now You See Me. The second one, how is it not called Now You Don't? Now you don't? I I don't know. It's Now You See Me too. It's like, groan. Oh, wow. God, I hope somebody pitched that and got turned down by a moron. Anyway. Uh, that kind of reveal hidden thing, I think is really, really tricky and something I'm generally bad at. Uh, I would love to do it. I think it's, it's one of the ones when you pull it off and it's good, it's busted when you don't, it's just a mess. Just the worst. Yeah. Like when you're like, huh? And they're like, yeah, I saw everybody saw this coming. It's like, oh, it's such an L (laughs) it's, oh God. Yeah, th- I think that one's probably the toughest. Like okay. romance, like, ro- like all of the other ones I'm thinking of that come to mind, they all have a pretty high floor. Romance, if you get good looking people fucking, you're doing great. <laughs> as long as you like, if you start there, it's pr- you can't really go that low. This is, this is people go nuts for a good set of abs and some nice tits. Yes, nailed it. Good job. Get a little bulge in there. Fucking A+. Plus. Mm-hmm. So folders in my cup. <laughs> nice. But I mean, like, and then action movie, it's like, do you have explosions? Do you have fist fights? <laughs> Neat. Was, like, was, you know, just I, hire if fucking Michael Bay can make it. Yeah, Michael Bay did just fine. His story sucks, but like he's still got things that went boom. He's fine. 
Yeah, there's so many of those things that you can just like the bar is pretty low where mystery reveal kind of shit. It's like you really gotta you really gotta crush it, especially when that's tantamount. Like one of the things that yeah. I think Ryan Johnson has done really well with the knives out thing is he kind of turned it on its head. He's really good at it for starters. I think he's a banger. I love Ryan Johnson. Um oh, kind of back to the earlier uh thing that I just reminded myself of when it came to directors. Ryan Johnson did a really smart thing, is he's worked with like basically the same people for like his whole entire career Hmm. on his second movie i think he's got mostly the same crew when it comes to like cinematographer producer you know editing all that shit that he has now so Hmm. all of his people have been like he likes working with them they know what he wants and so everybody gets a fun time and familiarity which is very key when you're adding new pieces taking in new pieces having that comfort level is busted so what ryan johnson did though with the mystery thing is it's not about the mystery you know he like reveals it and rewinds a bit there still is a mystery at the end but he kind of plays with the formula and that that one's still hard to do but he kind of does it in a way that even if you get it it's still good i think Mm -hmm. um because it's more about the ride than it is the reveal at the end although so far as far as i'm concerned the reveal has been pretty choice uh but that that one's the I think that one's the tricky one that I would be like a lot hesitant to be on. That I, I got kind of long-winded there. Did I answer your question? Yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. sweet. What's the best game that you've played with the worst story? Um. Hmm. Best game. Worst. I mean, I've played games with like non-existent stories. Yeah, I mean, like potato, like Brotato doesn't have. Or like Brotato doesn't have a story. Like, um, I mean, like, I mean, none, none of those, none of those type of games have a story. Um, yeah. like they're for for a, for for a while, the answer would have actually been League of Legends. Holy fuck, its initial lore was trash. Oh really? Um, oh yeah, it was garbage. Like it was it was it was so weird. Like uh, because you you the player like it tried to integrate the player as you were one of the mysterious summoners who got to dictate the champions. It it's just it's hokey. It's so bizarre. Um Actually, no. I, I I did a quick look at my my Steam catalog. Um, Neon White actually might might be best here. The story of Neon White is kind of stupid. It's when you when you stop and actually think about it, it it makes fuck all sense. Like, <laughs> like it, it's it tries to do this thing where it's like this grandiose idea, and it's like what like i I mean strike one your main character has amnesia and no one else does what Uh, you know strike two is it's i have to ask what are the odds of this and why is this happening at all it's like you know these people basically all these people are from hell come are brought up to heaven to purge away demons that show up and it's like he the main character runs into these four people who are from a gang that he was in when he was alive. Like it's, it's just what? Like, but why? (laughs) And it turns out God, God hasn't been running heaven for it. It's just, it's, it's fucking weird. The story is pretty garbage. The game itself actually pretty fucking great like <laughs> it, it's it's one of the few games where i've really gone in on like score attack because it's it's like a game about speed running effectively mm-hmm. and it's it's really tight like it's it's really tight it does really creative puzzles it's full its layout is really clever like it does a really good job and it did the smart thing where it fucking had steam integration so i could see my time compared to my friends 
<laughs> and we fucking and know that I am better than them. Exactly. Oh yeah. man, the amount of shit talking was insane. And the second you fucking beat we beat with each other, like, oh, look who took the top spot for this level. Hmm. Get back <laughs> to it. Like, oh yeah, that was like fucking two weeks of that shit constantly. Like we're just <laughs> we're harassing each other about it. The story is nonsense. Don't care. The game was fucking fun as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so that's that's probably that that actually had a story. Like, I'm I'm gonna say that one because there's a bunch of games that just don't have a story or like, yeah. you know, they put two paragraphs and said go 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 like like <laughs> Rotato for example. Like, I if I play if if I played it and gave a shit, I would make an honorable recommendation because of um, uh, what's my fuck uh, 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 Dark Souls, I. I want to punch everyone that says the lore of Dark Souls is so good <laughs> for for one reason. Don't hide it. Don't fucking make me scour for it like that. Like, uh, I, I hate I hate the way they convey information in that fucking game. Like for for doing something that is supposed to like and they they do something kind of like that in Risk of Rain 2. Where they have a bunch of descriptions on on items, it's like, but in no way is the story a motivator for your game. It's it's really not. But in Dark Souls, it kind of is. And like the whole point of Dark Souls, and one of its biggest draws for people is its is its lore and is its world building. And fuck you, give it to me straight. Don't make me hunt for it if that's gonna be one of the biggest draws of your series. Ah, <laughs> but I don't play that game, so I can't include it. <laughs> All right. Um, should should Magic the Gathering and its its canonical lore ever be made into a show? Oh yeah. Everything I've talked to people about this. There was uh, on one of the other podcasts I do, Passion People for Hostress Peeves. My friend, who is the uh, uh, beginning of like one of the reasons I made the podcast, uh, Brendan Hickey, now B Hickey, sorry. Um, they told me a story of the lore and they kind of fudged it a little bit. I found out or misremembered it or, you know, saw it differently or what, sure. whatever, like according to the internets. Uh, but, you know, I was just wowed at the story and the depth. There's some fucking metal dope shit. It's really deep, long lasting. I think the newer stuff is kind of mid. It's not bad, but it's just kind of like it's very Marvel esque. All right, we've got sure. this band of heroes. They fuck with these guys. Occasionally somebody changes teams. Very comic booky. And not in like the good kind of OG Marvel DC kind of way where it's, you know, there's like many different this and that. It's just like, oh, we've got this central core guys and we fuck with them at all points indefinitely. They move sure. to different lands. We, you know, we, it's this story, but this time it's, you know, on Treasure Planet instead of, you know, <laughs> it's like, all right, cool. Yeah, like yeah, it, yeah. it's the same people over and over. And that's not bad. It's just, you know, less diverse, less deep. The mm -hmm. OG one from like back in the day of like the Brothers War, which was like pretty fucking heavy, had to, having to do with like Phyrexians and shit and portals and sacrifice and murder to then uh, Garrod and the Weatherlight. Holy fuck. Like some of the magic card art you look at and you realize that's a story point where they went like they had that fucking um, the only good moment in like Star Wars 8 where they just turned the ship around and went full fucking speed and send it through the other one yeah. that shit like if you look at i think it's if you look at the art on vindicate on the original vindicate from apocalypse god damn it's like fuck like you realize <laughs> when you get into the story you realize there is uh there is an art that and it's it's uh i think it's krovax or cross i think it's krovax who is used to be a good guy kind of turned evil he's a vampire True. and he gets hold of squee and the reason we find out, I believe I've remembered correctly, and I'm sorry if I'm not for those that you know, the reason we find out Squee, the goblin, who in all of his versions is, so uh, original Squee is pretty in Mercadian Masks, he's two and a red for a 1-1. One, one. 
at the beginning of your turn, if he's in your graveyard, you return to your hand. Uh, Squee is then later reprinted, I think, Dominaria, 1RR, 2-1. You can cast him from your graveyard or exile. The reason yeah. he's like this is because the character is canonically immortal. We find out he's immortal, if I remember correctly, is because Crovax uh, just kills him. And then he comes back to life. And then Crovax, for out of boredom, kills Squee every day. Oh shit. And he just get, finds new ways of interest and in trying shit out on him. And Squee's like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> just waking up and just like tearing him apart this way instead of that way. It's like, oh, Jesus Christ. It's like, God. It's pretty fucked up. And also pretty fucking awesome. Holy shit. Yeah, it's fucking messed up. And also a lot of the characters, it, especially with the Garrett storyline, a lot of the characters die. Uh, Miri dies. Uh, Krovax, I believe, eventually dies. I think Garrett dies. He's like the main character. Like, lots of people fucking die. Karn doesn't die and Squee doesn't die. Partially because Karn's a fucking robot and Squee's fucking immortal. But I think was... everybody else kind of eats it. And they, like, say, they're like... fighting with Krovax. They fight with the Phyrexians, which are just like basically the xenomorph from alien except they hate you like a lot and they have like system to turn you into them as opposed to like eating you or using them as like wombs for their kind they literally just go we're gonna they're like the borg from star trek it's like oh shit it's like it's not <laughs> and it looks fucking awesome it's i think the older storylines would be fucking amazing i don't know enough about the brothers war but it's been hyped up they've come back to the storyline at least once or twice so that one's probably good i know the weather light is a bitchin story you've got fucking flying ships like old school ships so that mm -hmm. steampunk kind of shit here yeah, for yeah. it you've got people just eating it that mattered like a lot of these people have stories names items that were theirs that we know from in the game like miri skyle is a card that got played miri is a card that got played multiple times and she fucking dies trying to like stop evil and failing that's awesome that's what in my opinion good story has is when people like you've got the pg pg stuff that gets made a lot and it's beautiful of good guy goes after bad guy sometimes they die fighting but they win really good story is what you saw like early on game of thrones i think from talking to you a little bit about the expanse happens there too and an og magic happened a fair amount where good guy tries to stop bad guy and doesn't and that like emperor empire strikes back is one of the best if not the best movie in the star wars canon because luke fails you're like all right he's gonna win and they're like jokes on you idiots <laughs> luke loses his hand and is a bitch it's like enjoy walking out of this movie asshole you're like what the fuck have fun with your awkward car ride home nerds <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like it's it also has the banger of i am your father and you're like wait what and it's like all that shit in one movie yeah it's the best one like grow up and deal with it <laughs> And also, I believe they're making a magic movie, although some of the casting is a bit curious. A bit questionable? Okay. Not as questionable as probably uh, the, uh, the Borderlands movie, yeah. but although a friend of mine works for a studio that had a part in it, and he saw some of the test stuff, said it wasn't bad, so I'm, I'm hopeful and optimistic. I, mm, yeah, the, the I, role in casting. Mm. He he's not a fan of movies, so that could go one of two ways. But I believe he's played the games, so that goes one way. So I'm I'm optimistic. Uh, if you could regenerate one Doctor Who for a season, who would you regenerate? And if you could kill a Doctor Who, who would you kill? Ah, uh, so. Of of the four modern ones that I have seen, because I'm not gonna I'm not gonna fucking rip into the old ones because I don't know I don't know. I, oh, you I haven't know, watched like, the old stuff? No, I haven't watched. I mean, some of it just straight doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, like They're just and fucking I've, wild. Uh, yeah, I would. Yeah, <laughs> there was a war on and everything. Um, but you know, like so so of the the modern doctors that I know and have seen, I. 
I would get rid of Eccleston. That hurts. Sorry, buddy. Like, I think he was the uh, the odd man out because you had um, Matt Smith is very quirky. He's very comedic. He he he's the fucking he's the funny guy. He's the jester. Mm-hmm. You had Peter Capraldi, who is like he's the old kind of wizened sage almost like old veteran Mm -hmm. that's who that feels like and then you had uh david tennant who kind of fits somewhere in the middle and it it's just fucking gorgeous where he's like he still has enough fire in him that he fucks he fucks around and occasionally (laughs) he finds out um (laughs) Like, and and he had and and the thing that David Tennant could do, mm. that they kind of wrote out. It felt like, and that Matt Smith couldn't do is David Tennant could do fucking rage, yeah. which you don't think about, but holy fuck, he could be intimidating. Like, and I I think he just I think I I'll, I'm bringing back David Tennant. If that's not a question. I, I think <laughs> I, I think I could see all the old doctors and the new like. I think there's two that I've never seen. Like I, I think there's one after Capaldi, and I think they're, they've cycled past that now. That I've just I haven't seen, and I it wouldn't matter. Mm-hmm. Like I would still bring back David Tennant. <laughs> like he is the he's the best Doctor hands down. I, I think the tenth Doctor is the best one, and I don't think it's close. Yeah, to be fair, that was a gimme. <laughs> yeah, like I, I'm I'm sorry I have to throw Eccleston under the bus. He just I feel like he didn't have a good enough niche. I I feel like he's just kind of a worse tenant. Like yeah, he's, it just he's, kind of he's from harsh. the little bit I saw it was just kind of fine. Yeah, like it it's good. Like I I'm in no way like I'm so they they miscast. No, they didn't. He 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 was fine. He like and he also had it rough cuz he's he had to fucking introduce the world again to Doctor Who. So like he didn't get a chance to kind of choose his own spin on it and yeah. be different. Which is, I think, the genius of the show is that you can always just throw somebody in and the Doctor gets a new flavor. Which, I think that is a genius writing trick that that show got away with. It's, I mean, it's it's the Scarecrow in the the Nolan Batman series. Is he bad? No. But compared to Bane yeah. and he and the Joker? Yeah, he sucks. Yeah, he's just, he's, he's just <laughs> not like it. It's like worse by comparison. Yeah. It's... Yeah, it, it just... It, sorry, buddy. <laughs> You tried. You did. You good. tried. God, God bless for, you. For coming back with no rubric, not, not so bad. Yeah, yeah, like fucking, just fucking cold calling in. Solid. Um. All right, and the last question I've got for you: If you could adapt one book to film that is a berserk, <laughs> not giving you that out, what would you what would you want to do? And bonus, if you can think of who you'd cast as a lead. So one of the ones I thought of that they fucked that I'd love to give a second shot at is Artemis Fowl is a good one. It okay. deserves yeah. to. Yeah, fair. That did get fucked six ways from Sunday. That one got fucked, and I think that one's just like it's so free. I, I, yeah. I don't want to be like condescending <laughs> yeah. towards filmmaking, but it just like plays out very cinematically. Almost all the stuff is visual. There's no like contemplative thinking off. It's basically a kids action book uh percy jackson's another good one although they're redoing that i think i just literally saw some like here's who we're gonna have the l of it is i think the person who plays zeus is now dead i believe it's uh or i know it's i know they're dead it's the guy that played um uh chiron in the fucking uh series um oh shit what is that guy yep uh lance reddick Lance Reddick uh, was Zeus, or is Zeus. I don't know if it's like a show. R.I.P. Or a... Lance Reddick, yeah. new legend. Goat. Um, those are two really good ones. I'm trying to think of other ones. I haven't read as much as you have, sadly. Uh, those are the two that come to mind. Redwall would be dope, but again, they're doing that one, thankfully. They're doing that. I don't know how soon we get to see that. Um. Uh, yeah, you know, they, they fucked our boys so goddamn hard. I, I would say, let, let me take a swing at fucking Artemis Fowl. You can't do worse. Yeah, the bar is just 
infinitely low. <laughs> I'm sorry, the bar's in the fucking floor. Could not be lower. Uh, how do I cast a relieve? Hmm. I'd cast a fucking briefcase and it'd do better. <laughs> <laughs> cast a briefcase might be the best thing I've ever heard in my whole time. <laughs> oh dear. Huh. One of the issues is you they do need to be young-ish, but you don't want to the For character sure. of Artemis Fowl is very old. So you do want to hit this fight. I do think, you, like, how old is he in the book again? He's, like, young. Uh, right? I think he's 13 in the first book. I think you'd want to have, like, some of these actually, like, probably more like 15. Sure. You want to go a little high, not a little low. Sure. Um, but one of the interesting things is a lot of, they don't have it very common anymore. But you need to have a kid who can play very smart and a little bit in this one. He's not mean, I wouldn't say is the, the word I'd use, but just kind of like a bit of a sociopath. Yeah. Maybe the kid that played Finn Wolfhart. That's that's what I was thinking, actually. It's like Finn Wolfhart, maybe. Yeah, apparently that kid's got some fucking like he's got some moves and some edge. Uh the I haven't seen enough of it, but the kid that plays, uh, who's the other, who's the guy they're searching for all of season one? Oh, Will. Will, I think. I'm looking Maybe. at pictures now. Will's got some, it looks like a motherfucker's got some tood. Uh, so like maybe one of the two of them, um. Sure. Okay. I think those are the people I would, I would go for. I, I I don't think you could pull it off, but the I like the kid from Sex Education. I hate the show. The ending of season one has me just full bent on go fuck yourself. <laughs> uh, I probably shouldn't be that harsh on it after talking to people about the industry of like when you don't know if you're going to get like in the second season. Yeah, like because I think they pivoted hard at the end of season sure. one to be like, oh, we're getting a second season. And like. Because it felt like a miniseries, and then they just pivoted hard at the yeah, end of season they, one. Yeah, they dragged it out, and it felt like it shouldn't have been. They dragged it out. They made one of the characters gay. I'm going to spoil that. I fucking hated that shit so goddamn much. There's like They have this kid who's an asshole. He's got a lot of problems. And then just at the end, they just have him be gay. Because when it's like, that makes no sense to me. And it just felt like such a like, oh, now this. And just Surprise, like every, you're gay. Everything about it. They did the class like it feels like it's from the fucking 90s. And hey, if you're gay and or have had experiences or you think there's a reality to this, feel free to message us superprosbros at gmail.com or just at me on Twitter at like Ikes. I'm curious because at the end of season one, and I'm not sorry for spoiling this, the main jock douchebag who's gotten a little bit better gets into this spat kind of out of nowhere with the one of the main characters who's gay. And kind of is having a hard time with it or something like that. And they get in a fight, like literally pushing, shoving, fighting. And then they end up like wrestling to the ground and then they make out and kind of fuck. I'm like, what? Like, I'm sorry. That that feels like such a 90s trope of like, oh, you're a bully. It's actually because you're like hiding this thing you don't want to talk about. But to like literally putting hands on a man, fighting him, like, fuck you, violence. And then, oh, I want to make out and like, let's get in like inside of each other. I'm like huh like really it's like come on it feels so mid it feels so tacky You're like oh yeah it's the thing no sorry <laughs> fuck you uh incorrect yeah so i yeah i think to, back to your question i think artemis fowl i think i'd either i would try i think it's like hold on now i need to look up what the fuck his name is such an education lead actor. Uh, Aza Butterfield. Yeah, that's, I was going to guess that last name. I feel like... I don't know if he has the edge, because I feel like to be Artemis, you have to have fucking edge. You can't be like, oh, I'm just a child. You have to be like, fuck you, you're my bitch. Like, you have to have, like, edge and tenacity 
to be Artemis Fowl. But the guy yeah. literally just swindles. Like it's the first chapter is him swindling an alcoholic fairy and poisoning them. Yeah. Right. I mean, like that's literally the first scene is like, yeah, I don't care about your well being. Give me this shit or you're going to die. And <laughs> this is your protagonist. <laughs> like, Buckle up kiddos. Like, it's, it's gonna be a awesome. bumpy ride. Yeah. yeah, it's fucking great. But also, you can't have somebody who's meek do that. They have no, to be that's, that's, certain that's very of themselves and have a bit of edge. They, they gotta have. They gotta have a certain degree of chutzpah to them. Yeah, I I don't think you could have, and it's not that chutzpah that like Hollywood likes to think that. I feel like they cast good guys that don't have the bravado, and you end up with that like Spider Man three jazz walk snapping down the street bullshit <laughs> which is just never rings as anything good it just cringe to the fucking moon so like you need I'm trying to think of like a good actor who's no longer a kid that kind of has that gas about him i like you need to have in a, a a mildly villainous way, that kind of Kieran Culkin edge from Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. Or actually, actually, can we just young down Kieran Culkin? Like, Kieran Culkin in uh, Succession has the right kind of energy, granted, with, like, sexual promiscuity issues. But, like, he's got the right kind of energy in the wrong kind of circumstance to be Artemis Fowl. Where it's like, yeah, like kind of fuck you except he's got daddy issues and that like you can't have that for him as well but like he's got that right kind of like fuck everybody i know what i'm doing like how yeah. dare you question me how dare you like, i'm it artemis out fucking foul i'm gonna rob the fairy kingdom of all their goddamn gold like yeah fuck yeah oh i'm gonna potentially i'm going to gamble that this thing works the way i think it does otherwise i'm going to kill me my best friend and protector and his very innocent and unknowing sister yeah like what yeah i'm gonna do that i'm not gonna tell what anybody was that, what either. was the last part <laughs> <laughs> sorry what was that no don't worry about it i got this i'm 100 percent right have you ever done this before nope <laughs> okay i got blind confidence let's go yeah it's really what it is well i i think yeah young down fucking kieran culkin from succession take away the daddy issues you got Artemis fell right there baby <laughs> put him in the age machine yeah <laughs> All right, last one. Uh, we've been going on a minute. Yeah. Hope you guys have been enjoying this. Uh, la last one before the ad break. Bit of a gimme again. Longest solo gaming session. Mm. Or not solo, just longest gaming session. What's the, what's the longest you've set at a keyboard other than, you know, grab a bite to eat, take a deuce, you know, which whatever, li little bits, but like, Eyes open to eyes closed in front of a screen a large amount of the time. What's the what's the longest window we got here? About twenty hours. Damn. What, what are we playing? Uh that was that was I. I actually, I'm sorry. It would have been like nineteen hours. That's POE. Okay. Like, that's just what 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 fucking league was it? But there was a league that, like the Saturday after it came out. So it went hard Friday, and then it's like, I woke up at like 7 in the morning the next day, and I played until like 1 in the morning, or like 2 in the morning on Sunday. Mm -hmm. So that's about 19 hours. Like, I did fuck all the rest of that day. I think there was maybe a total of an hour that I wasn't actively playing, but it was like, I'm taking 15 minutes to grab like food. I yeah. I I have to go shower at some point because I re like, but otherwise it's like I did nothing else notable that day. I just sat there and fucking grinded Path of Exile like a goddamn fucking fiend and degenerate. It was a problem. the the call The only contender is I had there when when mom and dad were in Guatemala. <laughs> and fucking Eric Von Dippy and Aaron Franker basically just fucking lived with us for a couple of days. And I played so much WoW. And we just played so much fucking, we just, just played a lot of Magic and WoW and something else. And I actually lost track of what day it was. 
fuck yeah because i i had there it was summer vacation i had zero accountability and there was no mom or dad like i legit i remember because like roman showed up like roman hucks came over for some reason and he's like it's friday and i'm like it's wednesday he's like no it's friday like really (laughs) (laughs) i straight this is the only time in my life i have lost track of day so that's that's like a that's that's the only kind of contender is that but I don't think there was like a a contiguous or a continuous I'm doing this as like the that Saturday for Pee-wee. Wild. Yeah, I think the most I have is like I think it was that time that I was doing uh <laughs> it was the time that I tried to get to the that one get the all the objects to open the portal in a D oh. <laughs> two or D D3. before they fucking made that a gimme. Yeah, no, I spent it took me nine hours because I remember you sent me you're like, yeah, it took me an hour. I was like, fuck you. It took me nine hours to get all of them. I, I think it took me like two, but there was like one Ooh. component I got in like half an hour and you fucking fished for like four hours. I, I, I was I up that. playing the game. So I was playing before, found out about it, did all that. And then we played a run of it. I think I was playing D3 for like 12 to 14 hours that day. I think that's the most I have. And that Jesus. might be the most like of a game. I mean, I feel like I've done magic playtesting that's longer, but I don't know if that should count. No, actually, I'm not even sure. That might be the longest gaming session I've ever done. That one was really fucking long. All right, we're going to throw it to an ad break, but we'll be right back in a second. Don't you enjoy thinking about how things could always be worse? Isn't it great to look at a hellish wasteland and think, well, thank God I'm not there. Don't you love watching some other sucker struggle against the odds? To survive, well, you're just sitting happily on your couch. Well, let's talk about some post-apocalyptic movies. Be it a cataclysmic flood, a debilitating absence of water, or a genetically engineered plague run amok, these movies are packed to the brim with no shortage of human-made consequences our heroes will need to overcome just to make the slightest bit of forward progress. Beset with dangers and fraught with desperation, you can watch survivors in a hellish drenched nightmare escape kill people senselessly as their humanity erodes away before you. But don't worry, it's just a movie. You don't have to think about the philosophical and moral dilemmas too hard that they face. It's just fiction. So go on, enjoy the end of the world at someone else's expense. Warning, thinking too hard about these movies may enlighten you to the grim fact that humans may be hurtling towards one of these out- one of these outcomes ourselves due to corporate greed and a lack of empathy. Dwelling on this for prolonged periods may lead to malaise and an increase in political posting on Facebook. Welcome back, everybody. Thank you for returning from the void that is the ad break. Uh, also, thanks for sticking around and enjoying us just asking each other silly and we, slightly we, relevant. We have been yammering for a while. Yeah. So, uh, bro, to stop the yammering, why don't you tell us about... Uh, what you've been enjoying recently? I have a movie that I want to talk about because I have a mass. I have a. I have an opinion. <laughs> Man's got opinions. Let him talk. All right, all right. So there was a movie that Artemis and I watched, um, called "No One Will Save You," which was and I like saw the trailer for it, and it looked like an absolute fucking banger, kind of alien invasion horror thriller thing. I'm like, let's fucking send it, like. <laughs> I am I am here for it. Like trailer looked tense, and it it did. It was great, and it, it and it's been very interesting. Um, there is almost no dialogue in the movie. There is, I think, like twenty words total. There's just and damn, it, and, yeah, like there's just it, it isn't spoken, and it and it doesn't need it, like. There's a few little emotional messages conveyed. They do a lot with like body language and just having someone walk around a little bit at first. So it starts a little bit slow, but then it picks up, and there, there, there's just a fucking alien in your house, and it's awesome. <laughs> it does have a couple hilarious fucking like it's incidental humor, like like completely accidental humor, mm-hmm. where like aliens are possessing people and like it, it looks like they forget how to use their fucking body like <laughs> like at one point they're getting on like the ladies the chick's getting on a bus and this is like kind of 
so she gets she gets there's an alien in her house and she ends up accidentally killing it. Like as you do. Yeah, well, so the aliens of like telekinesis basically and she's holding something in her arm and it like swings her around and her arm is outstretched so she ends up like stabbing it in the head. <laughs> Again, kind of accidentally like, oh shit, I stabbed it. Um accidentally funny. But then she like to escape town, she goes on like she gets on a greyhound. <laughs> Which I'm like, oh, she gets on a Greyhound. The best part, she gets on a Greyhound in disguise, which I'm like, you were just in the police station. Why are you wearing a disguise now? Like, <laughs> what? Whatever. Yeah. But then, like, people, like, people who are possessed, like, try to grab her on the bus. And, like, they're trying to crawl over the top of the chairs instead of just walking down the aisle ladder. Kind of deal. like, it's, it's just some of that. It's like, what? But why? <laughs> like, and, but otherwise, like the scenes with the alien, like they're really tense. They're really good. There is the most hilarious bit of like it, it, it's it's this stupid, deliberate setup for a jump scare. It was mm-hmm. so dumb, but it was it looked really funny. So she she runs outside because like there's an alien in her house. She runs outside, and you see this like in the background, this head on top of a top of a house. It's this fucking enormous one. It's like 20 feet tall, and it's got arms that are double jointed and legs that are double jointed, which make it look really strange. And so she runs around her house and it like crawls over the roof and it looks fucking cool. And then it like steps too far and falls off the roof and just kind of like slaps into her fucking lawn, (laughs) which is just hilarious. But, you know, then, like, you wonder, it's like, is it dead? And then it you know, perks back to life and, like, runs at her and shit. It's like, okay. It's, it's like, it's, it's again, minus the accidental comedy that I'm highlighting, it's it's a very competent thriller movie with a, an interesting directorial take. Yeah. This goes on for about 70 minutes. The problem is it's a fucking 90-minute film. She gets taken. She gets taken. Let's okay. sure. I'm fucking spoiling the end because no one should watch this fucking movie. Oh, I. It, this is why endings need end, endings need to not suck dick. And here I'm going to yeah. tell you why. Yeah, you she, need to you need to land the ending to be sure. Okay, she gets she gets taken. She gets abducted. You know, fucking beam beamed up into space. Okay. And the aliens poke around her head, and you know they 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 look at the the childhood trauma that she's dealt with, and it's why she feels alienated, and it's because she accidentally killed her friend. Okay. It's sad. Okay. And so there's a bunch of aliens fucking standing around her and, and talking and mumber, mumbling to themselves in a completely incoherent language. And they they do something to her and they dump her back on Earth. And And this is like a fucking 10 minute ordeal that we're watching. Maybe longer. And the last couple minutes are her going about her going like next day. She goes about her day. Everybody else in town has basically been fed a brain parasite. So they're all mind controlled by aliens. And she like walks by her neighbors and waves to them and they wave back all in perfect sync. At the end of the movie, is her having a fucking, there's like a dance party happening. Like a fucking, like, like literally square dancing. Yeah. With all these people who are possessed that it pans up and there's just a bunch of UFOs flying around the city. What? <laughs> it just, it just fucking undercuts its tone. It, it just, it's, it's lesson is in, it's, it's moral or direct, it's directing compass is fucking incoherent. Yeah. Like what? What and like there is there is one point they could have just ended the movie. And I think I think if they did, it would have been awesome. Like she's fed a brain parasite. Right? And so she and it puts her in like basically a joy prison where her friend is alive. Like she's basically has this hallucination and her friend is alive and she mm-hmm. sees through it and forces herself to wake up. And so she comes to yanking the thing out of her mouth. 
right? And then, like, right after that, she's abducted. If they had just fucking rolled to black when she's abducted from there and just, just rolled credits, it would have been great. Yeah. It would have been great. And, like, I could I could point out, I'm like, you can get rid of some of your accidental comedy with the aliens forgetting how gravity works. Like, it's so it's it just, you know, it's less stupid. But, like, but just, it, the end is just so... It, it's so drawn out it's stupid it's so stupid what it, the moral is she she has childhood trauma so therefore she is spared but then what about the 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 parents of the daughter who died sure yeah. should they also get an exception <laughs> like what you know what about her her neighbor who is now functionally brain dead like this seems kind of fucked for him like it's it's just, it's so stupid. It's so incoherent. And like, also, shouldn't she be punished? She killed one of you guys. Like, she put a fucking piece of wood in his brain. Like, no one else hurt you guys. She's the only one who did any damage. Like, I I liked the movie, and holy fuck, it made me hate it in fifteen minutes. <laughs> Like it's so I'm so aggravated because it was actually good. So yeah, don't fucking undo your writing because you like the character. And there was an interview because Artemis looked into this because we, we both had the same reaction of what the actual fuck just happened. She looked into it. and Apparently the guy did an interview and he's like, I fell in love with the character. So I, I didn't want her to deal with a yeah. horrible ending. I'm like, fuck you. What's the best part? Like you have that moment of self destruction and get to walk away from it. Like one of my favorite things was helping you and doing the editing for. Um, is it online or you? Or is it being published? It, no, this one's being published. Is the uh, the uh, the the Clockwork King? Yeah. That moment towards the end when that catastrophic thing happens, and everything, all the lights go out. And there's so much anguish to me as someone who likes to think of themselves as a writer, as a creative, as somebody who likes fiction. That was the most heartbreaking, beautiful thing to take part in is to help you write that part and help you write the earlier one where they, they send like the suicide mission. Those ones that that kind of. It's almost like ego death. Yeah. Having those beautiful characters you've created, you've molded. Then having them die is so it, it it's sad, it's tragic, but it's lovely, it's beautiful. It is one of the most be great things of fictional creation is to be able to do that. I don't want to say you feel like a god because I don't think that's what that feels like. You care about them, and it's because you care about them it, that their it, existence got, hurts and is lovely. I say it's got weight. Yeah. It gives it weight. It makes you feel yeah. that that thing right there making you feel it's the reason why it was all a dream is fucking garbage. It's the reason, you know, Dave sex feels so leaves you feeling so hollow mm -hmm. is because it removes all of this feeling. It, it takes that reality that we all experience on the day to day of mattering of that feeling of loss, hurting that feeling of success feeling great to take that away is to remove any and all give a fuck yeah it, yeah i so it was just it was so infuriating to read that he had this this was an active choice and it's like and and he even said that he loves bad horror endings i'm like but you just forgot how to write one i guess you forgot how to like hack he loves one. bad horror endings like, like he um like like where it goes wrong for the character. Oh, and then he does that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what the fuck. Yeah, it's just like there's there's a measure of self awareness that almost feels insulting. Like it's like you almost figured out how to fucking find your way out of the paper bag, you dumb shit. It's <sighs> like saying you like self betterment and then fucking smoking a crack pipe. What the fuck? Yeah. It, All right, well, on the things people shouldn't see, do you have anything that people should see? Is there anything that you've been, like, watching recently or kind of looking forward to? 
Uh, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I've been watching an absolute fuck ton of league because worlds, the worlds tournament is happening. So I haven't been watching much beyond that. So. Fair enough. All right, well, come in and save the day then, I suppose. Please do. We, I referenced it once before, and I was talking with a friend about it this last week. There's a show on Netflix. It's called Midnight Gospel. It bangs in every direction. The show was created by Duncan Trussell and... Uh, why do I always forget his name? One second. Uh, the guy who made Adventure Time, right? Yeah, Pendleton Ward. I yeah, always yeah, forget yeah. his name. Guy, Jesus Christ. I love the look of this man. He's a fucking... Such he looks like a fucking permit. troll. He does really look like a troll. He looks like the most lovely troll that would bake you cookies. He's the best. So Pendleton Ward and Duncan Trussell, the two creative people in the world who probably consume the most shrooms, decided to make a anime <laughs> doc. There's no way that's not true. You don't even have to fact check me. 100% that's just right. <laughs> oh, you're right. <laughs> they, they definitely eat the, they, like they at do. least 5% they, of the world's they, shroom they population. thousand percent indulge in a fair amount of hallucinogens. I, I, and it shows in all the best ways. Oh, yeah. So this show is based, uh, it has a lot of art direction and the mildest amount of story direction from Pendleton Ward. And then all the input is done from Duncan Trussell. Uh, Duncan Trussell's a stand-up comedian and a bit of a loony mystic motherfucker and does just copious amounts of drugs and thinks in the most interesting ways and has a podcast that I don't know the name of, although I'm sure you can easily look it up. And they took some of the recordings and I believe they made some new ones for this one where the character is an interdimensional podcaster goes around and they just use his podcast stuff, huh. change a couple of words to fit the scenario. And it does have a bit of a story, but it's just kind of this almost this. It's kind of like putting an MC. It's like animating an MC Escher painting on bath salts to a podcast just so you have something to watch while you listen to the most bananas conversation take place. And it it is like, I don't want to make it sound like, you know, he's out here baked as shit, having this conversation. It's they're very salient conversations about nutso shit. Some of it's psychological, some of it's spiritual, some of it's just it. Like, I think the first one is he's talking to uh, Dr. Drew from uh, like was it love connection or love line or whatever it was okay. from back in the day. And I, it's a podcast that I actually watched before. I think it was the one that he does on Tom Segura's channel, uh, Dr. Drew's anyway. And they're just talking and, but they just like kind of put it in this like weird zombie apocalypse <laughs> thing that is character visits. Dude, you got to watch the show. It's nuts. Also the song that I don't remember if it's the intro or if it was just for the trailer is fucking amazing. The artist sadly, all his other stuff is kind of mid my opinion. Mm. It's like Joe Wong or something like that. It's fucking amazing intro song um actually i'm just gonna have that be my the song of the direct this week uh i don't think i've done it let me make sure that i have it right um damn it oh wait no yeah i haven't done it before okay so the it all the song is gonna be the outro song this week because i fucking love it it's the song is called dreams wash away okay by joe wong it's okay. gonna be my uh also my recommendation for this song this week because it's from the show and it it kind of reminds me of the way uh like we were talking about with like you know when you kill a character you love in a show off mm -hmm. that feeling yeah. is somewhat reminiscent of the way dreams wash away made me feel when i listened to it the first 100 times it's fucking amazing it is lovely and soul crushing all at the same time just yeah. like midnight gospel is i cannot recommend it enough the last okay. episode's gonna fuck you up if you watch it in the best <laughs> way it's gonna be the biggest bit of like ego death existential crisis thing that you'll be glad you had but in the moment you're gonna be like ah! okay. it's so fucking great i yeah okay just go check that I, out. I sorry, I do have one positive thing I think that I I watched recently. Our, our, Yay! Artemis watched some before she uh, took off again. Um, I because I make it sound like she's a dog that yeah, she just fucking <laughs> ran again. Bitch got out of the, yeah, she's like bitch made it out of the gate. The fence. She'll be back in five weeks. Who knows? <laughs> two two this time. Um, but um, because I I rem I had this weird fucking memory kick in. Artemis asked me something. I'm like, 
Hang on, honey. I am making toast. Because Invader Zim. Hell yeah! So she she just fucking put it on. I I, I gotta say, it's still fucking funny. Oh, it slaps. <laughs> like, it's just so bananas. And I became a hobo. <laughs> Turn my sister into a hog demon. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's just, it, the show is just so fucking weird. And there's something, I, I don't know, actually, I think Johan and Vasquez might fight for a person who takes the most drugs. And, yeah, uh, he's and, up there. He, like, he, he's a solid contender. Because I don't know wild. what's wrong with his brain. I don't think he's doing hallucinogens, though. I think he's doing, like, coke. <laughs> so, like, his stuff is no, so a little too metal. Listen, it's not, he, he's got to do something really that warps jagged. his perception of reality. Like, <laughs> that's not just, it's not just uppers. There's something fucking with them. Like, ayahuasca. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, man. But... He's just doing it with a biker gang in the, in the <laughs> middle of Chile or something. <laughs> His shit he's is so... Fucked up. to the peyote. Like, I don't yeah, know. I love it, but it is rough. <laughs> It isn't something you watch and chill. It's something you watch and then go run from it. <laughs> I, I I joked I joked with Artemis. I'm like, I mean, we what if we what if you, what if you watch the show on trims and we're both like, that's a terrible idea. Like, Don't do it. Yeah. It's, <laughs> oh, oh no. It's a K hole. You can't come back from. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it's the show, It's so it's so weird. Like the show is just. And I don't know. I don't know what it is about his art is so unsettling in a way. Oh like, yeah. Ah, yeah, hey. Like the blo- <laughs> Bloaty's Pizza Hog is like the f- most horrifying take on Chuck E. Cheese ever. Like <laughs> in name alone, <laughs> Bloaty's Pizza Hog. I think they were fucking. Man- that sounds like something you'd scream from the front door to the back. Run, children! It's Bloaty's Pizza Hog. <laughs> The end is nigh. <laughs> yeah, and like, uh, 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 it's just it's fucking crazy. So, if for some reason you've never seen Invader Zim, and you know, watch episode one, and if it doesn't gel, run. Don't watch it yeah. more. It only gets weirder. Um, <laughs> yeah. Great. It definitely is one of the better like intro to subjects. Uh, also, I do gotta say, I I would I would kill. For a ten-hour loop of the intro song, yeah, like I, or good. just like a longer version. It's only like a minute, and I'm like, I want like five minutes of this. Can has more. It's so good. <laughs> like, yeah. I, I, okay, I'm stop ranting. Now. All right, uh, hold on. Before we go, we, we've got to remind us of the best intro songs to uh, shows. That one's Is on it... the mind, and it's hard to beat, honestly. The Invader intro is fuck it it bangs. It really does. Like I never skip that one. Uh Enemy for Arcane was really good, actually. Um by Imagine Dragons. Although yeah. I although they somehow somehow they've become the new like nickelback, like the modern nickelback to Mimon, which I find confusing, but whatever. Um yeah. like I, I guess I see it, but I I don't know. It definitely isn't as bad as Nickelback was. Um, but yeah, Nickelback got a, I think also Nickelback got like a bad run. I think that's a fair comparison. It's just the way that people attack Nickelback initially was like aggressive. Even other, even other musicians in the space have said as much. They're like, what did Nickelback do exactly? <laughs> um, I feel like there's got to, there's, there's gotta be some other like like anime opener that's metal as fuck that I like. Come on, come on, brain, hop to it. But, like those those two, those two are the two that honestly leap to mind. I'm on the brain. I I mean, nostal- for nostalgia's sake, I'm a sucker for the Venture Brothers opening. Um, Venture Brothers, pretty I'm, good. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Me- fucking anime opening, Isaac. You should have said something immediately. Tank. Yeah, tank's iconic as fuck. Tank tank is hard to beat. Tank's really hard to beat. Tank is really hard to beat. Like I like the opener for Samurai Shampoo. No, um, it's fine. It, it's it, it's not fine. It's good. It's not tank. Get the fuck out yeah. of here. Like, 
yeah, I think I think Cowboy Bebop. It's Cowboy Bebop or maybe Invader Zoom. I think it's one of those two. For me, it's I, I have a new soft spot. Tank is still the best, but I've got a new soft spot since you mentioned it. I'll go a different route. Chainsaw Man kind of bangs. Um, Chains- Chainsaw Man is very good. X Men the animated series, sure. Just the barely big, head over big nostalgia boner. Yeah. Uh, just barely over the Batman series. That one also kind of banged. And uh, what's the what's the show that we were watching? We we did at least one. I think we've done multiple reviews of different seasons. I uh, can't. Where the I, I also will note since I watched it recently. I do love the Gravity Falls opener too. Oh, Gravity Falls is great. Yeah, it's it's a nice jingle. Where is the? Uh, where is it? We we definitely reviewed the show. Inside Jobs intro. I listen to that shit naked okay. high as a kite. That <laughs> intro fucking kicks ass. Yes. Oh my god, that one's a bang. It's very... Again, way too short. Yep. Okay. Like say, um, Bojack Horseman too. Bojack Horseman fucking busted as well. Yeah. Uh, is it? All right. Before we end up going too far, I was like, we're gonna we're gonna keep fucking going. We we're gonna make stop. another episode out of that one almost. But since it's not going to be this episode, that'll be our episode. Thank you for tuning in. And if you enjoyed this, please feel free to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And don't forget, new episodes of Super Pros Bros come out the first and third Saturday of every month. Bye. Bye. See you next season.